We're here backstage at Wicked, which is, in my opinion, one of the greatest shows in the world for many reasons. One, because it's spectacular to watch, but two, because the two stars who are in it have to be amazing. Eden Espinosa, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm really good, and so amazed by your performance that I saw this week, because you just seem to have the most amount of energy I think I've seen of any performer and your voice is just so big and there's no hiding behind the numbers in this show because they're all huge whopping great big Broadway numbers aren't they? Exactly yes they are <laughs> right out the gate too my first number it's like sometimes well I appreciate the compliment that it looks like I have so much energy it's hard to it's hard to muster up the energy some days so that that means I'm doing my job. <laughs> How does it work on a two-show day? I mean, that must be impossible. Yeah, two-show days, I try to... It is impossible, especially Wednesdays, because we come back from a day off on Tuesday, and then Wednesday we have two shows. So that is... Wednesday is the hardest day for me, always. Um, and I try to just take it one show at a time. Like, okay, we're done with this show. Now it's... I try to treat it like two different days. So, come in. Hey, hello. Sorry, we're doing this interview. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. There you go. So it's two different um, shows. Yeah, I try to t treat it like just two separate entities, not as a whole a two show day, because then it tends to be a little overwhelming sometimes. <laughs> you closed the first half with probably the biggest number on Broadway right now, Defying Gravity, when you get louder and louder and louder and <laughs> higher and higher and higher. And literally. <laughs> you literally cannot miss a note because you're so loud in the theatre. And that's yeah. what's revealing about this show that this, this not, it's not one of those shows you can kind of hide behind the numbers, is it? Yeah, no, it definitely isn't. But I think um, I we especially are really lucky to have our sound guy, Jordan, and he really knows us very well. And and so he tends to, if he can tell we're we're holding back a little bit, he'll help us out, you know, here and there. And, and um, but yeah, it's really about the pacing for, uh, as the actress, you know, you have to know you have so much more coming up. Like, even after Defying Gravity, there's so many more big numbers for Alphaba in Act Two. So it's like, I can't blow it out totally here. So, but it's an amazing moment, and I'm, I'm lucky to be a part of it. Do you ever ask yourself why you? Why are you the one that they chose to do this role? Because this really is in the top five musicals every single week since about 2002. It earns millions of dollars a month yeah. and it's sold out every single night. So therefore, yeah. they can get the best people. They can afford to get the best people yeah. in all senses because people want to be in the show. So why you? Um, I actually started out with the company as the standby for Adina Menzel. So um, my job at that time was, you know, in my opinion, had a lot of pressure, especially because the show became so successful so fast. Um, and so you kind of have to keep the show running while the the lead actress that everybody's here to see isn't here. So I kind of, I, I'm lucky enough to have developed a good rapport with the producers and the creative team, but I, th but why me? I, it's, that's a good question. I mean, I obviously I, I showed them what they needed to see back then and now is a different story for me because I get to play the role the way my instincts tell me to and my choices and that's that's definitely rewarding so it's good it must be a hard feeling when you're taking over from someone who's been so highly regarded they do let them and they've done every show and you're filling in there must almost be a groan at the beginning of the show when they go Adina's not on today we've got the fill in I mean how does that make you feel it is and so funny because it is that is definitely what happens like you know you run out for your entrance you have the first scene and then your first big song and you I would feel the energy of the audience like sitting back in their seats <laughs> with their arms folded like okay we got the standby show us what you got but by the end of wizard and i you felt the shift of oh okay okay we're, we'll be all right we'll be all right <laughs> you know of course they're uh, they're disappointed as anyone would be but um yeah it adds some pressure as the standby it's a big job you always have big shoes to fill even if the person's not a celebrity or a well-known name it's the regular person that's supposed to be there and when they're not there you think oh, man we get the standby we get the understudy but they're usually amazing and so it's it was a, a challenging experience and uh, made me appreciate your your role as the regular actress, you know? And so, I don't know, it's hard.
I think that's the one thing that I've learned from Broadway, that when you get the stand-in, they're still going to be breathtaking and amazing. You kind of think they're going to be something rubbish, but of course you guys are all so good, and this is one of the biggest shows, so obviously you're going to be good. Then you get the call to say, okay, the big star's going, do you want to take over? Is that a compliment? How do you feel? Are you elated? Or are you thinking, right, this is my chance to shine now. I've been filling in for this lady for so long, and now yeah. I get a chance to do it myself. Yeah, it was... Um, I actually left um, the show while I was still the standby to do another Broadway show. Um, so to be asked back after I left the company um, to to come back and, and be the role was a huge honor. And it's, you know, having been a part of the original company... Uh, I hold a certain standard for the cast as well, you know, as well as myself that I was around at the beginning and so I know what it should be and what it's supposed to be and what Joe Mantello, the director, his vision was. And so um, there are there are little, you know, Edina-isms that I just, I love so much, especially in the Act One Alphaba that um, I, I intentionally keep because to me and to everybody else who saw the original company, she she's Alphaba. She created it and originated it and her fingerprints are all over it and I like to keep them there as, as opposed to trying to reinvent the wheel. So um, it, it was an honor to be asked back. Yeah. It's a beautiful story in one way, yet it's a horrible story in another because it's about people being different and overcoming that. and attractive people getting the good looking guy and not attractive people not getting anyone and then of course that comes full circle I mean it really is a a heartwarming show it sounds kind of cheesy and it's not a cheesy show at all because it's so subtle and funny as well which is what I like about it Um, but it's actually got a meaning to it which is unlike a lot of the shows yeah definitely there's a few I mean every the thing what why I think it's become such a success is that everybody leaves with something different. They leave with something. And we have such a wide fan base, you know, adults and senior citizens and definitely kids. And, and you know, people leave. There's, you know, a political vein in there. You know, there's the politics. There's the friendship. There's a, a love. You know, there's kind of a love triangle there. And, um, you know... I think because Winnie Holtzman, the book writer, did such a great job at writing the book, and there's so much heart in there, that maybe if some of the exact lines were in another show, you'd be like, what? You know, or maybe it would sound cheesy, but for some reason in our show, there's just so much heart in it that it never comes off that way. It's just very, very honest and true, so... I feel bad talking to you now, I'll be honest with you, because in less than an hour you'll be on stage doing the role, and I'm talking to you and I feel like I'm taking away something from you. you, Are you able to live a normal life? Because I've just been in Vegas talking to performers who don't speak during the day. They hold everything in. I mean, is that ridiculous? Do you need to do that? Or can you actually have a normal life and be a Broadway star? You know, it just depends on the person. Everybody's body is different. Everybody's, you know vocal instrument is different so some people do in fact have to not talk all day this role is definitely you know one of the hardest women roles ever it is the hardest woman role on Broadway right now and um, you know a lot of other you know female roles or male roles for that matter don't they'll have people do two two show days or they won't do eight shows a week Elphaba unfortunately has to and you know you just have to do what what's best for you 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 know your body you know your voice and I don't have to not speak all day it's actually better for me to talk and just warm up slowly throughout the day so then I don't have to do a big warm-up here but I have to make sure I get a certain amount of sleep and drink water and you know I do have to take care of myself but I don't have to live my life as a nun (laughs) <laughs> and what about the makeup? I mean, presumably putting green makeup on eight Every times a week day. is kind of exhausting and laborious at the best of times. It is. It definitely is. I mean, there are definitely days that I say, man, I wish I could just do the show today without the makeup, <laughs> <laughs> which, of course, wouldn't really work. But um, it's it's a huge process, not only the role, the onstage time, but it's the offstage time as well. You know, I'm the first person to get here of the cast. I'm the last person to leave. I can't, you know, the, all the other girls can take their hair out, all pretty at pink curls and wear their makeup out. And I don't like I have to green in my hairline. And, you know, it's um, it's just a process. There's always people, you know, f- touching up your face and fixing your wig and, and stuff like that. So it's it's the on and off stage time. But it's so it's cool when you take a second. There are times on stage where I kind of recheck in with myself 
and say like, what am I doing? I get to, I, I look at Glenda and she's got this huge sparkly crown and this beautiful big dress and I'm green and there's flying monkeys around me. And it's just like, it's so much fun. And, and, and we're so lucky to be in, in, in a hit show and such a great show. And play dress up and <laughs> that's what it feels like sometimes and of course the irony is i don't know whether this is from a guy's point of view or not but at the end of the night linda's been there kate who we're going to talk to in a moment um is in the beautifully sparkly dress and she's beautiful and all the hair and makeup yet we end up loving you which right. of course is the full right. interesting which thing about great. it which you know it it when you, uh, she accomplished her goal, you know, it, it made people see her in another way. It's, you know, and that's a line in the show. It's, you know, it's looking at things another way. And so, yeah, so that always is a huge compliment to us that we, we did our job and we told the story and everything came across that we wanted it to, so. Congratulations on your role in this. You literally are the best of the best. I mean, Thank this is you. a huge, whopping, great big role, and you don't get a minute to yourself during the show. It's one of those no. where you think, are you ever going to go off? I mean, if I ever did a show here on Broadway, I think it would be Phantom. I think he's on like 13 minutes in yeah. two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> there are, Kate and I always talk about those roles that we're like, oh, man, we wish we had the the young Elfie and Glinda <laughs> for Act 1, and then we could come on for Act 2 as the adult, you know, but... um it's it's rewarding in every sense of the of the word so it's great great job and thank you so much for thank talking you. to us i appreciate it thank you my pleasure